Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so potential buyers have more information about the seller and the business to help them make a buying decision. Before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of the business. So it's a display advertising and Amazon Associates business created in December of 2015 in the pet care niche. And the average monthly revenue for the business is $2,398 and makes an average of $2,195 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are domain and all site content and files, four redirect domains, social media accounts, which include Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube, and writer contact information. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com marketplace and search for listing 57236 to learn more about the business, or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So that's a brief overview of the business for sale. Let's hear from the seller with me today. So welcome to the show, Kelly. How are you doing today? Doing great, Nick. Great. And I'm looking forward to learning more about you and your business. So to start us off, can you tell us a little about your background in building and running online businesses? Sure. When I got out of the Air Force in the early 90s, I went to work in the pump industry, selling pumps to various factories and municipalities. And uh, I still do that. Uh, about 10 or 12 years ago, I started to realize how much money I was spending on online advertising, especially when Google started to reward me for how much money I was spending. I, I realized I was spending an awful lot and decided to take a look at getting involved in, on that side of websites. And so that's how I started and have just learned as I went since then. Very nice. And I know that you originally purchased this business as opposed to building it. So what were you looking at when you had initially been, I guess, looking to purchase a business? Well, the first thing was I wanted excellent content and I had been burned a couple of years before by a big Google algorithm change. And the content on the site was just really impressive. And I figured that greatly reduced my risk of future Google changes from getting heavily penalized at all. And that was attractive. And secondly, it was monetized with AdThrive. And I hadn't had an AdThrive account prior to this one. And I had heard great things. And I was able to talk to AdThrive about additional settings or additional help I could get from them if I owned the site. And they were super helpful, and so far, well, the whole time I've owned the site, about a year now, AdThrive has been great, and the content's proven to be pretty good as well. We actually benefited from the December 2020 Google algorithm change quite a bit. Nice. None of the other changes since then have, have hurt us at all. Very nice. That's always great to hear when algorithm update helps a site owner. It definitely is soul-crushing when all of your hard work can uh, disappear overnight. So that's a very good sign for this, this site. Thank you. Awesome. So it's been a year. Why are you deciding to sell the business now? So the business has grown a lot. I think the profit's up maybe three times since back when we bought it. And the time has come to either really go forward blowing out the business, getting serious about social media, getting serious about adding content, or flipping the site and getting it to a a new caring owner who will do that (laughs) instead of me doing that. So just so happened, we found a site last month we bought on Empire Flippers. So we bought a new site (laughs) and we're going to put our emphasis on that one. And so we're just going to go ahead and sell this one. Although it's uh, a little attached to this one, but it's it's a tough decision, but that's what we're going to do. Very nice. Very nice. So you've spent a good year with this business. What did you learn while you were working on it and building it to achieve that 3x that just seemed to work? The first thing we did was really listen to AdThrive. Well, we decided right off the bat that 
Amazon maybe isn't so trustworthy as a source of revenue. Who knows when they're going to change their rates or change their terms of service or even cancel you, right? You never know. So we decided to focus on Ad Thrive. And in talking to them, they were very clear about what aspects of the site were ideal and what aspects weren't. And everything from the builder that was on there, there was a builder called Elementor was on the site, but not on that many pages. And they really suggested getting that off. And like literally when we got that off, our numbers increased. They told us about how to maximize the income from Ad Thrive, and they suggested that we add videos. And so we made a handful of videos. So right now our own videos are running on the site, and that adds maybe 25% to our revenue. And so we really listened to them, and they were right about everything. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that's awesome. I don't normally hear of a new owner working directly with the ad provider for advice, but it makes so much sense now that you're saying it. So yeah, that's awesome advice. And they even told us to do things that didn't sound quite right to us, Mm -hmm. but they know they got the computers (laughs) that know. So we just went with them. Nice. Was there anything that they recommended or anything you tried with the business that didn't work? You know, I tried to think of something and I really can't think of anything. I mean, no, I mean, we didn't really add much content over the year, less than 10 articles, and we didn't do really anything with social media. So maybe the thing that we never got benefit from adding content or doing the social media, which we probably could have. So that's an opportunity we definitely left on the table, but nothing that we actively did didn't turn out well, because all we really focused on was making the site technically sound, you know, making sure all the internal links were good and all the external links were good and just making it all technically outstanding. And then the content was already great. The content we added was the same quality. And then we just maximized the earnings with Ad Thrive. So none of the stuff we actually did didn't turn out. Okay. Well, I'll have some follow-up questions on some things you said when we discuss opportunities for the business. So, but that sounds awesome. So you said that you didn't actively add a lot of content. It was mostly cleaning things up. How would you describe the amount and the type of work you do on this business for maintenance? Well, now all we do is update the theme and plugins. But, you know, right when we first bought it, just within the first couple of weeks, we just got rid of unused plugins and, you know, all the stuff that you'd probably do, anyone would do if they bought a brand new website, right? And it's just, we knew that in the future, Google was going to become more concerned with speed. And so we got rid of the builder off of there and made sure that, our host handled, we switched around so that our host handles the caching. And so that worked out really well. And that's really, you know, we haven't really had to do any work on this thing since last November. Nice. And on to what you were already kind of alluding to or some information you were providing. Opportunities. So if you were to keep the business, what are some ways that you'd try to grow it? I think you mentioned social. Right. We did literally nothing with social media, and that's super important. I think we probably should have. That's the only regret I really have about the business. We probably could have, with not that much work, beefed up the social a bit. So that's a big opportunity sitting there. And the accounts are there. It's just that we didn't do anything with them. And then in the pet care, pet transportation, dog space, there's unlimited number of things, many, many keywords that a person could pursue. And I think, like I said, I think we added less than 10 articles over the year. So a person could be adding 10 or 50 articles a month if they really wanted to really boom this website, which I think, you know, we had to decide between doing that or flipping it. So we, Mm. we came down on the side of flipping it because of the other opportunity in Empire for a person. Yep. Yep. So you had mentioned that the site remained resilient in the face of the December algorithm update. What do you think are the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of? I think the biggest risk is, now Amazon's a pretty small part of the earnings, but the biggest risk it has to be Amazon. Anybody who's who lived through last year with Amazon changing the rates, yeah. right? You already know. Amazon, yeah. you never know what they're going to do. So, you know, that's up in the air, all the Amazon stuff. But yep. It looks to me like display payments are increasing, not decreasing. So 
I don't see any risk on that side of the business. Just, you know, the hundred some bucks a month it makes from Amazon might be a risk, I guess. Yep. Yep. Pretty much the thing that anyone who drives commission through Amazon Associates has to worry about. That's the risk. So right. Got, got it. Okay. So a few housekeeping questions to wrap this up. How much support are you willing to offer buyers? Well, a month of emailing, we could do a phone call, we could do video call. We're open. I mean, depending on we we'd love to help the buyer if they need the help. We you know the I think we've got the site so it's pretty straightforward and simple. It doesn't have a complex maze of plugins. We don't have any PBN network or anything that's challenging to understand, but whatever anyone would need help with, we definitely want to assist. Got it. Sounds good. And would you commit to a non-compete? Yeah. Okay. And are you open to something like an earnout? Yeah, it's not something I've done before, so it would totally be determined by the circumstances and the exact offer and opportunity, but I'm not automatically close to it. Okay, sounds good. And final two questions. Putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think this is a business worth buying? It's pretty darn stable, pretty low risk, and the opportunity for a lot of upside is there. And I mean, it's pretty, yeah, I'm very confident that there's an enormous potential for upside if the buyer's willing to really put the effort into social and in the content. Yep. Yep. Sounds good. And last question, potentially, is there anything you'd like to add that you think I might've missed during the interview? Nope. Pretty thorough. All right. I'd have to agree. Well, awesome call, Kelly. I'm going to wrap this up here. Thank you so much for sharing your story and joining us on today's episode. And Yeah, I hope your business is purchased in the near future by the right buyer. Nick, thanks a lot, man. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 57236. And if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.